Hey man, how you doing? My name is Oliver, I work for myself, I really enjoy travelling and I enjoy staring poetically from the tops of balconies apparently. I'm 31 now, but only recently did I start to actually feel like I was a man. I'm 31, but for the most part, I've, in my life, I've felt lost. I felt like I've been in a canoe with no paddle and no sail and I've just been floating in the ocean uh, getting thrown around by the waves and the currents and hoping that I end up somewhere good but I've never actually felt like I was the captain of my own ship to use a metaphor. Sometimes I had outward success like I was a personal trainer for over seven years I did, I did fairly well with it. I worked in West London in a really good studio for a while but I still didn't feel this sense that, of fulfillment. I felt like no matter what I achieved there's something missing. Uh, I just couldn't figure out what that was. But that was until I came across a book. Do you ever come across a book that when you, when you start reading it, it's, it feels as if that book was actually written specifically for you. Like it's describing all of your problems in ways that you can't articulate. It's talking directly through to you. It's getting through to your soul almost. Well, for me, this book came across at the right time. And it was a book called Finding Your Own North Star by Martha Beck. And in this video, I want to share with you four of the ideas that really resonated with me, that really shifted things for me. And it's my hope that when I share these ideas with you, that they might have the same effect. So firstly, I'm gonna read this. I'm, I'm reading my email, because I wrote this thing in an email for my list, but I'm gonna read it directly to you. So the first idea is that you lack a sense of direction because you've built a life that's centered around pleasing other people, not yourself. Okay? So when we're young, we're basically taught to be good little boys, behave ourselves, and do what our parents, our teachers, and sometimes the bullies at school told us we should do. Okay? So to many of us, and this was certainly the case for me, our life becomes about uh, this script. Right? If I make other people happy, then I will be happy. Okay? If, I just, if I just please people, then I will be pleased in return. The problem is, this doesn't work. Right? This is not how life works. It's not how adult life works. Okay, um, and maybe we did. Maybe we constructed an entire reality that centered around this script, right? Maybe we pursued a career to make dad proud. Maybe we chose to marry a woman that our mum would approve of. Maybe we act a certain way or dress a certain way because of the way we were bullied or treated in school or whatever. So a whole sort of identity becomes centered around uh, what in the book she calls it the, the social self. It becomes around like pleasing the social world, okay? Rather than building a life around what Martha Beck calls the essential self, which is the true self, which is who we really are deep down, okay? So the thing is, pursuing the social self stuff, right, and pleasing the world, that might lead to some worldly success and things that, you know, might be good. Like maybe we earn a certain amount of money, our income level's high because we pursued this career, or maybe we, we got married, right? It's not, an, or had kids, it's not a, that's not nothing, right? The problem is that when we are too focused on pleasing other people and, and feeding the social self over here and not feeding the essential, deep, fulfilled self, the, the self that we really are, that's when an imbalance happens and it creates this inner conflict. Okay? And that's what tends to lead to the, a midlife crisis, for example. If you're having a midlife crisis, it just means you've been playing the social self for way too long and you are not, you've not been authentic okay you've not been living in integrity if you want to really find a sense of direction and fulfillment in your life pleasing the social world pleasing other people is something you absolutely just must let go of i interrupt this broadcast to let you know that if you're interested in inner work personal growth and development i created a very useful resource that i wish that i personally would have had earlier in my journey it's a free 31 day fillable journal you get a high impact writing prompt every single day and you also have in the PDF the space to answer that. If you commit to this journal for 31 days, I guarantee you, you will not be the same person at the end of it than you were at the start. So download it for free. Click the link in the pinned comment below. Download that and start getting to work on that. And I guarantee you that will that'll create some cool shifts for you. Enjoy the rest of the video. So the second idea is that to find direction in your life, you need to follow your highest excitement. Here's another thing that you might have been told when you were a kid, because I definitely was. You can't do what you enjoy in life. <laughs> life must be hard. Work must be hard. You've got to grit and bear it. White knuckle it. Urgh. My dad told me this because my dad was a very hard working man. He used to work in the coal mines when he was a kid. So he thought that I should also work as hard as him and that to pursue 
um, you know, things like excitement or pursue your passion is, is a luxury, okay? Or it's something that, it's something for kids or for children. But I'm actually, what, I've, what I actually discovered, not, not just from the book, but from actually living this in my own life, your excitements, they, are, they matter. That your excitements are almost sacred, okay? And by pursuing your highest excitements, that actually does lead, or that, and that will lead, to the highest form of personal growth and fulfillment that you can pursue. I'm gonna give you an example, okay? Uh, I had a client, I have a client, I still work with him, called Tony. That's not his real name, <laughs> but I'm gonna protect his identity, right? So Tony, in his late 30s, came to me, despite being a very successful entrepreneur, making boatloads of money, and having all the freedom in the world, came to me because he felt deeply unfulfilled. Okay? So we started working together and we uncovered that he has a passion, a passion that he'd put to the side and he'd not thought about for a very long time. And that passion was drift racing. You know, like Fast and the Furious, Vin Diesel, that kind of thing. Um, but he'd put it to the side and thinking it's not very important or it's like, oh, it's just, it's just a hobby, right? But when we started really exploring this and connecting to that feeling, that deep feeling of excitement in his life, he actually realized that drift racing was the thing that he wanted to pursue deep down, but his social self, right, and all the ideas of what he should be doing, shoulds, um, prevented him from doing that. But now, after working with me for a while, what he's doing now is he's actually started a drift racing team and he's brought drifting into his life in, in such a deep way that he has actually found a deep fulfillment and passion and purpose in his life and direction that he was seeking all along. And it was all from f uh, pursuing something that as a child he really, really loved, which is drift racing, okay? So that idea that you can't pursue your excitements because it's childish, that's a bullshit idea. And that's usually, that usually comes from crusty, bitter people, all right, who are having a pretty bad time in life and they want you to have a bad time in life as well. Take your excitement seriously. <laughs> Idea number three. This is probably my favorite, to be honest, because it aligns with my values the most. Idea three. To find your purpose, start telling the truth. So in life, right, we have something that it's otherwise known as your intuition, but also I call this your internal GPS system. It's that voice inside you that knows what you want, it knows where to go, and deep down it just, it just knows. It's got this ultimate knowledge of things, and it, it's got this sense of, right, here's who I am, what I want, and what I'm here to do. There's a part of you in everyone that has that, okay? But the problem is, sometimes that internal GPS, that inner voice, is not a voice, it's a whisper, all right? Sometimes it's very subtle. It, 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 it guides you, and you need to be tuned into it in order to hear it. The problem is, <clears throat> not only is it so hard to actually be tuned into yourself with all the distractions in reality at the moment, right, Jesus Christ, but also there's one thing that, that drowns out that voice more than anything else, and that is bullshit, okay? That is, that is the, the lie, right? That is dishonesty, okay? And it's something that we all do, right? We all tell white lies, uh, I don't know what the, 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 the uh, calculation was, but I think some psychologists calculated that we tell, what is it, I think like about 30 lies in a short, in, a, in like a 30 second conversation or something. I don't know what the exact figure is, but we lie a lot, okay? We all bullshit in some way, white lies. But the problem is with this, even though it's normal, it does not mean it's useful and it does not mean that it's sane. It doesn't mean it makes any sense. It, it's like a toxic contract that everyone makes without really knowing it. Because when you lie, two things happen. Two things happen that, that drag you away from your purpose. The first thing is that it, that when you lie, you fill your head full of loud nonsense, okay, that drowns out that inner voice, that connection to yourself. The second thing it does is that when you lie, you are, you are confirming to yourself that you are not a person to be trusted. Because after all, why, why would you listen to yourself if you know that you're a bullshit artist? <laughs> so if, a, if you do get a voice from within that says, maybe you should do this, your rationality is going to kick in and say, why should I listen to you? You lie all the time. Why should I trust you? A lot of men come to me and they say, I don't trust myself. And it's like, we really look at things. It's like, and it's, this is not comfortable. We uncover that they tell a lot of lies. They tell a lot of bullshit to themselves and other people. And that's one of the, the aspects of coaching and, and conversation that's very important is we get to the truth of the matter, okay? And the truth transforms, okay? So in the book, Beck, Martha Beck recommends a practice. Well, there's actually two aspects to this. 
The one practice is to get in touch with and keep in a journal all of your white lies that you tell, okay? All of your bullshit, get it in a journal, okay? Start becoming aware of it. The second aspect of this is actually, in the moment, correct your dishonesty, okay? So say, for example, you're telling a story to a friend and you add a bunch of embellishments and details that didn't actually happen. We, if you notice this in the moment, you actually correct your own behavior. So you spin around and say, actually, that's not what happened. Here's what really happened, okay? And this is something that you need to train over the course of time. And if you do, and when you do, this will change your life, guaranteed. Idea number four. I love this quote, it's from Aristotle. For a man to lead the orchestra, he must first turn his back to the crowd. So I was stuck for so long because I feared failing and looking stupid in the eyes of other people. Now, in the book, she talks about how a lot of people struggle with this fear of failure and humiliation because they have a very toxic idea in the mind. And that idea is that there is this vague crowd, critical negative crowd in life, in their life, that's watching their every move. <laughs> and if they fuck up or if they fail or if they look silly, this crowd is just gonna descend upon them like a, like a pack of wolves and just judge them harshly and it's gonna all go to shit, right? So let's examine this idea though. Okay, let's examine this idea. If you resonate with that like I did, let's examine that. Is it true that there is a crowd out there that's, that's watching you intently? Is that true? Are you really that special? Or is everyone just so wrapped up in their own shit that they don't really care much about what you're doing at all? That's quite a liberating idea, don't you think? That people don't actually care as much as you think they do, as much as you thought they did. Because that gives you the freedom now to, to just go out and imperfectly just take action and fuck up and make and fail and fail forward in life. It, makes you, it gives you the freedom to do that. But the thing is, most people are just held back by this vague idea, this, this crowd of people that usually consists of people who really did criticize them in life. Your parents, if they were consistently criti critical of you, they're, they're in the crowd. Bullies, they're in the crowd. Teachers, harsh teachers, they're in the crowd. Harsh figures on the internet, for example, they're in the crowd. But the problem is, the thing is, this crowd doesn't actually exist. It's all in your head. But the, the, the potential, the opportunity cost that's holding you back from that imaginary crowd, that's real. And to transcend the crowd, it means letting go of the need to be approved of and to be liked by everybody. It means turning your back to the crowd. And if you want to start your journey of personal growth and development, then download in the pinned comment below, I created a journal. I created a free, fillable, 31-day journal. Okay, you download the PDF, and every day you get a really high-impact prompt, journaling prompt. And you don't even need your own journal or anything else, you can fill it out in the PDF itself, okay? It's a really good resource. It's something that I definitely wish I had earlier in my journey. So click the link in the pinned comment below, download that, and that's the start of your journey. So take care guys, see you next video, peace.